بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما Okay the next thing we'll try to get into something called private public IP addresses like in the previous section we have seen the reserved addresses now these are the addresses which are reserved and whatever the addresses which are apart from this all are, all you can use and whatever the addresses which you can use they are further classified into two categories we have something called private IP and the public IP now the basic difference is private IPs which you can use within your lan or wan within your company network that's what a simple definition we call it as private ip addresses whereas the public ips or the ips which you can use on the internet so which means if you want to go to internet you need a registered public ip but if you want to use any addresses within your company network whether it is a lan or wan as long as they are not connecting to internet we call them as public ip addresses. sorry private ip addresses but the question is why there is a classification and why we need to have a private and public ip separate separate so if you take an example here any network like if i just take an example of a simple network topology here so let's say this is my company network here and in here i'm using 192.168.1.1 network so that is my network which i'm using here and this is connecting to my router and from there i'm connecting to my service border and then from there i'm connecting to my internet okay so let's say there is a host here with an ip address of 192.168.1.1 and of course the network id is 192.168.1.0 that is a network id which represents a complete network now the host here so i'm using this pc so what i'm doing is i'm trying to send a packet to reach somewhere on the yahoo server let's say so there is a yahoo server somewhere on the internet so i want to reach this yahoo server so we generally go and type in www.yahoo.com the request uh, to this one so which means my source address is 192.168.1.1 and my destination is my yahoo server so normally the packet goes to your router and if the router knows it will forward the packet to the isp and the isp will forward the packet on the internet as i said in the internet you have multiple isps connecting to each other so my isp knows where exactly yahoo server based on that it will forward the packet to reach the yahoo server and the yahoo server is going to reply back uh, with a with a request whatever if i'm requesting for web page i'll be getting a web page there is a normal uh, process of internet generally what we use so but let's assume now the request is going from 1.1 the request goes to the yahoo now the yahoo server has to reply back to the 1.1 but if you take an example here when you're connecting to internet means internet is a place where everyone is connected right so there is a possibility that there is some company xyz using his own lan maybe using the same network id or the same network what i'm using in my company maybe there is another company let's say pqr also using the same ip address or the same subnet what i'm using likewise there may be you no know, pqr something you know so pqr already i used some xxx probably using the ip address of 182.168.1.1 so there is a possibility that because the ip addressing scheme is common for all now the yahoo server has to reply back to 192.168.1.1 that is my return return packet should reach now the question is it will go to this device or it will go to this this user or it will go to this company or it will go to this company like that or it will go to everyone or it will go to no one so that is a confusion here so just like if you take an example of your um, mailing address like if you're using some postal address so you should not have common postal code so then there will be a confusion right so to avoid this there must be some kind of unique unique postal code uh, based on that unique postal code we can you know the post can be delivered properly now similar kind of thing is required which means we need to make sure that every organization is using a unique address address 
and this should not be repeated anywhere this should not be repeated anywhere so you should not repeat this but again practically that is not uh, again possible in all the cases because uh, because every company designed their own networks so which means internally they will be using their own private networks so 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 what we'll do is before i go to the private network so what happens is now this user when they send the traffic outside they use some kind of public address public ip now typically this public ip are like registered ips just like a unique postal code you have a postal code so let's say this is the postal code so basically this is the postal code of my area let's say and this is unique globally now based on this postal code so you will get a postal code similar way we get a public ip let's say uh, 2111 that is a public ip what i get and when your packet is routed it actually routes based on this source address not based on this address and this address is like unique address which you get from the service portal similar way when the packet is routed from this when it goes outside to the internet it uses some other ip let's say 3111 when this goes maybe they they use some other address let's say 50.1.2.5 let's say and maybe when this goes they use some 65.1.1.5 let's say some unique address and these addresses are unique addresses uh, typically we call them as public addresses so basically what uh, public ip is a public ip is uh, used on the public network like internet which means when your packet is going outside the network you need to go with a registered public ip and this public ip is recognized on the internet just like your postal code and this address is globally unique which means if i'm getting this public ip let's say 5111 so this is the public ip which is used by company abc to route the packets outside the internet so you get this ip and this is registered throughout the world so no user or no company gets the same ip it's like allocated to this particular organization similar way if i'm using xyz so basically the traffic from xyz goes with a six different public ip similar way the traffic from pqr will go from a different public ip let's say 7111 or whatever the public ip like here you can see these are the public ips so every everyone uses a unique public ip address. so this is like public ip okay and these ips are registered as i said registered means like unique like your postal codes or your register numbers vehicle numbers they are like unique similar way registered address and to get this address we need to get it from service portal of course service portal gets from aina I'll talk about that hierarchy later. So you need to pay to the service portal to get that IP so that you can get that registered address. <clears throat> so typically, if you want to route the packets over the internet, remember over the internet, you must be sending a packet based on some unique address. And we call that unique address as a public IP address. But again, the question is, okay, we will be using public ip so then uh, what about the private ip so private ips are the ips you can use uh, if you are not connecting to internet it's quite opposite to them like if you are running your network a lan and this is not connecting to internet then you can use any address even you can use public ip if you are not connecting to internet basically you can use any ip addressing. But generally what we do is when we design our LAN, like if you take the same example here, this one. So in my LAN, we'll be using some private IP address. So the private IP addresses are the addresses which you can use within your company network. So basically any address within your company network, as long as you are not connecting to internet. Even if you're connecting to internet, then there is a translation process. So these addresses are decided by the administrator. So we can decide the addressing, what address I should use in my LAN or in my WAN, which device will should get what IP. That is something we can decide on our own. And of course, it will be unique within the organization. Means if my organization is running 200 devices, 
with five different networks. So I'll ensure that this addresses will not repeat within my company. But someone on a different company, different location, like in Dubai, there is a company XYZ using the same address, no problem because we are not talking to each other. So as long as you're not talking to each other, you can, there's no problem. Okay, so a unique address within the organization and these addresses are not recognized on the internet. Means if this is a private IP, with this private IP, you cannot go to internet. So basically uh, by default, the service for us have a rule saying that, you know, there is a default filter applied. Any address with a private IP will be discarded or dropped. So that's the reason uh, the packets will not reach the internet by default. And, and if you want to use these addresses, you don't need to pay to anyone. You can just go ahead and assign these IP addresses. And these are not registered. Not registered means just like if I'm using this IP in my network, someone else in some other network, some other company, some other country is also using the same IP or the same subnet or the same network. So there's no restriction for that. So basically this is the classification. So mostly in the production networks, what we do is in our LAN, let's say in our LAN, let's say I got 200 devices or 200 users or 200 devices. So I want these 200 devices or 200 users should be able to access internet. So I want all these 200 users should be able to route the traffic to the internet and get access to internet, which means in normal cases, I need 200 public IPs, right? For each and every user, I need uh, one public IP. So if I'm not using private address, I can use some public IP with 200 IPs. So practically that is not scalable. <laughs> so in today's networks, what we do is we generally use the private IP. So 200 private IP addresses. And when they go, when the packet reaches the router, on the router, if it is a company network, or maybe on the service portal side, we'll configure something called NAT. We'll again discuss on this NAT later on, but in a separate section, what is NAT, network address translation. Now with this method, what we'll do is, even though the packet is sourced with the private IP, but when it leaves, the our router or when it leaves the service portal depends where you configure so it, it actually uses a public ip which means normally the source address when the packet is starting from a lan the source is 182.168.1.1 and the destination is yahoo but when the packet is leaving the router or leaving isp the source address will be the public ip whatever is registered with you and the destination will be yahoo and the packet is routed based on this public IP, not based on the uh, private IP. And of course, when it returns back, it will again translate back to the private IP, reaches the actual destination. So the good thing about this NAT concept is, even if you have thousands of private IPs, they all can go with one single public IP. So we call this as Porter translation. We'll talk more on this, as I said, in the NAT concept. And this is one of the main reason why we are still surviving with IP version four addresses. But if you, if you just think about one user or one public IP means, you know, the IPv4 addresses like 4.3 billion was not even sufficient. So with the help of this NAT, we are allowing thousands of users to go to internet with one registered public IP with the help of NAT or PAT. The same thing, port address translation because it uses different ports for each connection. Okay, so so typical scenario in the production scenario, as I said, we'll be using a private IP within our LAN, like the same example here. If you take this private IP in ABC, XYZ, and PQR companies, but when the packet reaches or goes on the internet, they will be using a unique registered public IP that will be the source address. 